It might be that long. Okay. Is it a potato or a rock? Can we put a sponsor in here? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. 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 The speakers. I come out there, but I keep going. <laughs> oh, come on. It's not that bad. <laughs> 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 Alright, Jeff. Alright, Jeff. Alright, Jeff. Alright, Jeff. Alright, Jeff. I'm actually recording this, okay? I don't care. Now, what do you think of the Yuma degree, man? It's good. It's a good program. I, I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to get into. Yeah. It's definitely around this area, you know, it's a lot of agriculture around here, and it's, uh, when you're working out here in the field like this with these classes, it's a good, it's a good deal. It so definitely gives you a better understanding of uh, how different things are done with different crops. The crops that I'm not very familiar with, like cotton and corn and beans. Uh, my name is Barry Tickus. I work here at the University of Arizona Yuma Agriculture Center with weed control and general agronomics. And this is Marco Pena, who's our uh, research specialist who helps out on a lot of our projects. He works with myself, John Palumbo, and Mike Matheron. Um, we're, we're, we're standing at a uh, what was a class project for the Applied Weed Science project uh, class this semester. Um, the purpose of this project was to uh, induce herbicide symptoms so that we, it would help us better understand how herbicides kill plants, how they're selective, that sort of thing. So this, this project was conducted by the Applied Weed Science class and we thought it would be useful to, to many of you as well to uh, go through each of our uh, plots here and describe uh, how the, these herbicides work. And what we did was we chose seven modes of action, seven mode, main modes of action. Um, and we've uh, planted four different crops and sprayed over the, a couple different rates of uh, herbicides in each of these modes of action to induce the symptoms to help us better understand how these things work. So the four crops that you're going to see this, this today uh, are um, uh, field corn, sorghum, beans, and cotton. We've replicated it four times. We have untreated plots as well and a lot of weeds. The weed may, predominant weed you're seeing is nettle leaf goosefoot. Well, although we have remarkable weed control on some of these plots, you're, uh, uh, that was not our main purpose. Our purpose was to induce symptoms. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of these seven modes of action. Just take a couple minutes to describe how that mode of action kills plants and why it's selective to some crops. This first mode of action are the lipid biosynthesis inhibitors. This is, includes a lot of the herbicides that were registered in the mid 80s, late 80s, that were uh, uh, very specific to grasses. Uh, the, really some of the first herbicides where we could uh, spray over the top of a broadleaf crop and selectively kill grasses. These really revolutionized grass control in many broadleaf crops. Um, they include herbicides uh, the, the ones you're most familiar with are probably Post, Fusilade, Select, Select Max. Other ones like Assure um, uh, are, all have this mode of action. It also includes uh, herbicides like uh, ones that we use in wheat and barley, um, Achieve, Puma, Discover. Those use the same mode of action. The way these work is they inhibit lipid biosynthesis 
and uh, sometimes called ACCase inhibitors. ACCase is an enzyme that's produced in the plant that leads to the production of fatty acids or lipids, which are, play a lot of functions in, in a plant. Uh, one of the most important is uh, um, cell wall construction. Uh, the way these work is they're strictly post-emergence, they're absorbed through the leaves and move, tr very systemic, translocated to the growing points of the plant where the uh, um, cell membrane uh, uh, production is ceased and the plant eventually slowly dies. It takes seven to ten days to see death, sometimes longer in the winter months, for instance, on winter annual grasses, it could take three or four weeks before you see a plant die. So what we'd be looking for is uh, plants that uh, um, stop growing immediately after they're sprayed and slowly turn chlorotic, uh, red, or stunted, and eventually die. Um, let me uh, find a couple uh, plants. You can see we've had no effect on the broadleaf weeds in here, but we uh, strictly uh, selectively control grasses. Let me find some grasses in here that uh, show the symptoms that we're looking for. This, of course, is untreated over here. And this is what a normal, this is corn, and this is what a normal corn plant would look like. On the other hand, a corn plant that was treated out here. So you can see these are both the same age. This one stopped growing when it was treated. This kept right on growing. If you look, if you, uh, and this stopped growing immediately, gradually turned red, brown, and it will die. Uh, typically, you can take the new growth in the whirl of the grass and pull it out and you just have a necrosis. You can see down there at the base how it's all brown and black and it's just, it, it's turning necrotic. And that's very typical of this mode of action.